It was in 1991 that David Gold and David Sullivan first dipped their toes into football club ownership, buying a 29.9% stake in West Ham United. They'd hoped to buy more shares and buy the club out in full, but the two men found that their backgrounds in the sex industry preceded them. They were met by a wall of silence at the club, and with no one else willing to sell them their shares, they sold out and in 1993 bought Birmingham City instead. According to Gold's autobiography, Solid Gold, the two had come close to acquiring Leeds United, which in the end was too far away, and Tottenham, which was carrying too much debt. Birmingham St Andrews Stadium was in dire need of improvement, and the club was also in danger of relegation to the third division, but Sullivan and the two Gold brothers believed that the club was a sleeping giant. The then 23-year-old unknown Karen Brady was poached from the Daily Sport and installed as managing director. Barry Fry was brought in to manage the team, although David Gold was initially reluctant about the appointment. I thought he must have been on drugs, he was so hyper, Gold wrote. I remember him saying to me, Chairman, I will get you out of this poxy division. And of course, he was good to his word, only I was expecting to go up into the Premier League rather than down to the third tier of English football. Still, Fry took Birmingham back into the second tier before being fired and replaced by Trevor Francis, the first ever million pound player who'd enjoyed some success coaching Sheffield Wednesday. During his five-year tenure, Francis took Birmingham to the top of the division, but could never quite secure promotion. The highlight of his reign was the League Cup final, which they narrowly lost on penalties to Liverpool. He made way for Steve Bruce, who had seen out his playing career at St Andrews before finally taking the club into the Premier League in 2002. Birmingham spent seven of the next nine years in the Premier League, but the fans had never truly taken to Sullivan and the Golds, and especially Brady. So, when the Hong Kong hairdresser turned investor Carson Young emerged to buy a stake in the club in 2007, negotiations for a sale began. The rest of Gold and Sullivan shares were sold to Young by 2009 for £81 million. This, of course, would prove a disaster for the club. Whilst Birmingham did win the 2011 League Cup, beating Arsenal in the final, they were relegated from the Premier League and have yet to return. Worse, Young would be arrested and later charged with money laundering. He was subsequently sentenced to six years in prison. In July 2016, Young's appeal process was exhausted and he is currently seeing out his sentence in a Hong Kong jail. The club was sold to another largely unknown Hong Kong-based company called Trillion Trophy Asia. Sullivan and Gold, meanwhile, returned to their first football acquisition in January 2010. They quickly moved to secure 50% of the shares in a now failing West Ham United. Initially, they had been welcomed by the fans. The team returned to the Premier League and there was a measure of stability following the chaos of the Icelandic bank collapse, the Tevez and Mascherano affair and relegation. But the deal to move to London's Olympic Stadium has alienated both friends and foes alike. Under the terms of the deal, West Ham United would get a 99-year lease and pay just £2.5 million rent per year, plus an initial £15 million conversion fee for a stadium that cost the taxpayer anywhere up to £700 million. Rival clubs close by, like Tottenham and Leighton Orient, were furious at this perceived advantage it gave to West Ham. At one point, the whole process was scrapped after the European Commission ruled that its state aid rules may have been broken. But despite several court cases, the move went ahead and West Ham began life at the 60,000 capacity London Stadium at the start of 2016-17. As Arsene Wenger said in 2016, I say to West Ham, well done. You've won the lottery and you don't need to sweat like I did for long years and fight for every pound. The person who led the negotiations of that deal was Karen Brady, now Baroness Brady. She was made a Conservative peer when she received a CBE in the 2014 New Year's Honours list. The move to Stratford has not been popular with many supporters. The matchday atmosphere around Green Street had been replaced by a far more modern and corporate experience. The tight, intimidating atmosphere of the Berlin ground has gone, and the running track needed to keep the stadium suitable for athletics keeps the fans far from the pitch. There have been problems with crowd trouble and lacklustre performances on the pitch, especially this season. 
Wherever Gold and Sullivan, and indeed Brady, have gone, they have divided opinion. Both men are among the richest in Britain. Gold came 271st on the Sunday Times Rich List with a fortune of £460 million, and Sullivan came in at 121st, and his is worth £1.1 billion. Both men have diversified and sold most of their interests in the sex business, and some as being a notable and lucrative exception. Today, they make most of their money from real estate, partly a product from their days investing in Soho and central London property which has since exploded in value. There is no doubt that their money saved West Ham. The issue, though, is what comes after the ownership of the two avowed fans of West Ham United. Will they be remembered as the club's saviours who moved the club to a stadium that might catapult it into football's elite, or the men who threw away a club's history for a tidy profit? As Birmingham City fans discovered, sometimes the grass isn't greener on the other side. Music